Beckman Unleashed, podcast number 17. We are live. We're live. All right. In true Beckman style, we are going to jump right into it. I'm going to talk about boss, uh, Prince had to go to a vet this Sunday. I told you about that. Mm -hmm. And it was a very interesting experience. And I'm going to talk about the that vet clinic and talk about the vet and talk about what went wrong with them. And if you ever have a problem like that, then I'm going to tell you all about it. Also, I'm going to talk about muzzles. People ask me all the time, what muzzle is my favorite? Why do I use muzzles? And Eric, people all the time say, oh, why don't you? Oh, sure. The other dog has a muzzle on. He know he can't bite. He know mm -hmm. he can't bite it. Prince or anybody. And mm -hmm. I'm going to talk about that comment, which I get hundreds of times over the years, that comment. And they have it all wrong. And I'm going to explain the dog's mind. Are you getting mind. paid for that? Of course I'm not getting paid. You get paid for, for nothing. Nothing. Baskerville. It's my favorite muzzle. They, they, you know, if they paid me, that'd be great. But um, they don't. It's still my favorite. So right. you want me to get into the vet thing? Yeah, let's do it. All right. So I called you that day. I think woke up on Sunday and Prince could barely open his eyes. So he was like squinty and we're like, uh oh, cat got him, right? We got the cats and I we monitor or we have up until this point, monitor Prince and the cats, but they're kittens, right? They can just get one eye and maybe we didn't see it or something. And so we're like, oh, maybe he got scratched in the eye. Sunday, I got a lot to do. I vets are very different. There's good ones. There's bad ones. Um, I've been to vets before over the years. Obviously I run a facility and sometimes these emergency vets on Sunday, you go there and they're like, yeah, it's a uh, four hour wait. Like it's a big, it can be a really crazy deal. And they're like, just leave your dog and, uh, call us in four hours or we'll see, we'll get to you in four hours. We, we have a couple emergencies, right? It's an emergency vet on the weekend. So they're like, we have emergencies. So it's going to be this long or you can wait in the lobby or there's all these crazy things happen. I'm just like, Oh my gosh, this sucks. So we go to, I'm going to give them a shout out veterinary emergency group. Are they paying us too? They're not paying us either. They have no idea I'm doing this. They didn't know who I was. Um, in Encinitas, California. And we just randomly picked it. Actually, I called a couple places. One of them said what I just said. They go, oh, we have a couple emergencies. It's going to be a few hours till we can get your dog in. We call Veterinary Emergency Group in Encinitas. And I don't remember what they said, but I was like, okay, that sounds good. We're going to go there. We go. I never bring a dog in to a vet clinic ever. Okay. I've taken you know dogs I'm training. They're staying with us over the 15 years. I've taken dogs there. I go in, I leave my dog in the car. I go in and I say, Hey, I'm checking in, blah, blah, blah. And I go, we're out in the white Sequoia and we'll be right out there. And everyone's in there with their dogs and their dogs all stressed out and dogs are barking. And I'm just like, we're out, right? We don't sit in the lobby of the vet, which I never knew before. I guess I started doing this many years ago. And cause pop, most of the, much of the time when I'm bringing a dog in, that dog has problem. If I have it, the dog might have problems. Mm -hmm. If I don't want to sit in, in an office four feet from a dog where my dog is going to bark at lunch. So that's a pro tip, right? Pro tip. Oh, good. Yeah. Don't you think? Don't sit there and hang out in this stressful environment. Like, yes. Go hang out in the parking lot. Yeah. Linoleum relax. floor. The dog's all cold. Yeah. The dog's all, you know, weirded out by, you know, who knows the smell other. So anyway, there's cats in there. Smell of death. There's, probably. Yeah. Smell of dog death. No. <laughs> There's like cats and carriers always in vet clinics and dogs don't always love cats. So there's a lot of reasons to sit in the comfortable cars, beds in there. I always bring a bed for the dog in the car. So check in the vet and a um, helper vet tech come out and they uh, quickly, they come out to the car and they look at his eyes and I'm like, yeah, maybe a cat scratch. And they're just kind of looking. And I don't, I don't remember exactly what they said. And they're like, okay, let's go to the back. And this is where the story gets interesting, in my opinion, because I've never seen anything like this. We go in the back and I'm like, there's a lady sitting over here on a couch with her dog. There's a big room. There's a surgical table over here. Then there's all the computers with staff around it. And I'm in back with them. And I'm like, this is weird. It's free range. Yeah. It's I'm like, why are you know, what is this? 
and they come and they look at his eye and they, I, this is another thing. And if your dog gets an, Oh, I thought he had a foxtail. Mm. That's what I thought. Cause my, my old dog, uh, Bosco had a foxtail under his second eyelid. So dogs have the second eyelid right on their eyeball, right? You see it. It's mm. this thing that sticks close to their eyeball. And I thought he had a foxtail and that's why I told him, I think he has a foxtail. I thought maybe a cat scratch, but really I thought it was a foxtail. Foxtails for you don't know. They're very you dangerous. Get your story straight, bro. I know. Is I thought it was foxtail. So they, they take a Q-tip and he, she dips it like in and like pulls his second eyelid out. Cause that's where the foxtail will get in. And she goes, yeah, I don't see anything. She goes, I think he just has, um, um, itis um not eye itis it would be called um it's like when you have an eye inflammation oh um like a sty or something no just just uh, inflammation of the eye but as i'm sitting there basically i talk to the lady next to me and she and she's sitting with this frenchie with a cone on and i and i'm like I, i'm like why are all these people in the back area and i go oh so what are you here for and she goes my dog had a banana sized, he ate something like a nap, a dish towel or something. Nice. They did surgery and I've been with him for four days. And I go, you've slept on that couch for four days. And she goes, yeah. And she's just back with everybody. And she, so her dog ate something, came to this place, had surgery. What, what everyone else will do is they'll put your dog in the back for four days and you go home and you live your life and hopefully your dog makes it. And your dog whines in a back crate. This is traditional veterinary care. Okay. Your dog whines and is stressed in a back crate. Well, at this place, you can stay with your dog when your dog is recovering from a major surgery. That is not normal. Sounds awesome. It's awesome. It's like a hospital where family can stay. And they say it's good for people to be in the room as you're waking up and, you know, all this crazy stuff. Like, you know. Yeah. That's it's it's that way. It's a hospital style where you can visit or stay with your dog. It's it's really amazing. And you're just back in the back with everybody else. You can watch your dog surgery if you want. I would not recommend it. The lady who was staying there with a Frenchie said she watched another dog have its eye removed. They just do the surgery right there. And the vet goes, yeah, we removed a dog's eye. And the owner and that lady watched the whole they thing. Helped. <laughs> yeah, like don't watch your dog, sir. I would never watch, like, because the only reason I'd like be there is to comfort my dog. But I wouldn't be there to be like, no, no, you missed something. Like, no, I don't like, know what's going on. So I'm I'm not gonna watch that. No, but that like, lady, yeah. It's like sausage being made. Like you don't want to see you it. You really Just, don't want to see it. You know, you're like, did they even do that right? They look like they were kind of messing up. You yeah, know? it's like it's when like, you watch a surgery and you like realize that in a surgery they'll actually take like a bone saw and like and you're just like, I had no idea they were that rough. Like they're very rough in surgeries with people. They'll just like saw things through and like yank you open. This reminds Do you know me, that? This reminds me of uh remember your favorite show Seinfeld with yeah. Kramer? Where yeah. he's watching the surgery and he drops a like an M M&M. and M. Oh yeah, it goes. <laughs> no, it's a it's a. Was it not? It's a the minty one. Oh, is it? A, it was a junior mint, right? The junior mint. Yeah, it goes flies. Yeah, because they'll just they're like really surgeries are really rough and people don't know that. Yeah. Do you know that? Um, they'll they'll just like rip like pull you open and like. I'm sure it is. Do, it's similar. It's to like, really rough. Remember, I remember being old enough, like at a dentist. You know, when you're really young, you don't know what's going on. Yeah. You know, there's drilling and stuff. But like when you're like 10, you're like, oh, you're taking a Dremel tool and just drilling it into all my teeth. Yeah. Like I thought there was a more of a science than that. No. no. And they'll just cut through. They're just like, uh, oh. they're just like, we'll just drill your tooth. And then if we like run out of room, we'll like have to like, we'll have to like, ha yeah, yeah, like hammer it out. Like with a hammer. Hammering is normal. It's normal <laughs> behavior. Sorry. Didn't mean to sidetrack. Go ahead. No, no. <laughs> so. Minutes. It is. I And I asked the vet, I go, so this is just like an open floor plan and people can stay here. And she's like, yeah. And I go, does anyone else do this? And she goes, other groups have tried because it's a chain. I mm. looked it up. There's like three or four in California. There's like almost like it looks like like one in almost every state. I just picked a random state. I was like Virginia. There's like one. In What's Virginia. the group called? Do you know? Veterinary Emergency Group. OK, so they're all called that. Basically. Yeah. OK. Nice. Yeah. Veterinary. Emer I, I don't know, man dogs stress out in the back after surgery 
And if the owner can literally, if they want to sleep with their dog recovering, that is not normal. And that is wonderful. It's pretty sweet. It's, it's amazing. It's like hospice care for dogs kind of. Yeah. Except for like, sometimes they don't die. Yeah. They usually don't die. It's like a morbid already. Yeah. But like, it's amazing. Your dog can recover with you, which is giant. And that's just not the history of veterinary care and veterinary veterinary emergency care. And it's more like people care. And, and you were shocked, good. huh? I was shocked. Yeah, I was just sitting there crazy. amongst all the employees in the back where they do all the stuff. Hmm. And it I didn't have that cold feel. It didn't have that. We do this stuff in the back where you can't see feel. Hmm. We will do this right in front of you. And then you can. You can hang out like that lady probably who sat there for four days and all the workers were just right there doing all their stuff on their computers. This wasn't the reception computers. This is the back of the house stuff. She probably knows more about veterinary care than anyone. Like she learned so much just sitting back there for four days sleeping there with her Frenchie. She's going to start doing it herself. Yeah, she probably could. She's, she's lying to take an eye out of it, out of an animal now. Yeah. If you've seen it. So shout out to them and what they're doing because it's it's amazing. I'm going to never take my dog anywhere else. I think anyone who's interested in the um, beginning of this story, go to our, what was it called? Bosco Greatest Dog Ever podcast. Because that's, isn't that the one where you went in through like what happened with Bosco and oh. the terrible experience you had with veterinarians? That right? is true. So like this is the polar opposite of, that experience yes right yes yeah yeah I'm glad i remember i that. went to the best vet in san diego sorrento valley don't something. say it don't say it why not i already said it it is interesting that um like this group right who doesn't even know like there's a probably a decent number of people that are going to watch this and you're like shouting them out yeah. like all good yeah don't you think yeah and i we have a regular listener he's a beekeeper and uh, we have some mutual friends and he lives in Encinitas. I know that it's on YouTube. It's like Encinitas beekeeper or something. So he'll probably take his dogs there as Malinois. He's not the surfer guy, is he? No, he's a beekeeper. And he always comments. And he, I, I heard from a friend. He's like, oh, we, we, they're like, this beekeeper dude loves you. Have you met him? No. Hmm. But anyway, he's in Encinitas. We have a lot of people in Encinitas. Uh, we're not, we don't live in Encinitas. I'm going there though. People know about you though. Yeah. All over. So. That's the place, man. That's the place. Yeah. I don't like doctor's offices. I don't like hospitals and I don't like veterinarian places. Vets, I guess. Yeah, I agree. Prefer to not go to any of them. Yeah. Until yeah. that tumor's like this big on your head, you're just like, oh, I'm going to stay home. That's you. This thing's going to go away on its own. Yeah. Yeah. That's not good. There's probably some guys out there that understand what I'm, yeah. what I'm feeling. You should here. go see it. You should yeah. go see, go to the doctor. As you get older, yeah. Like you, you gotta go get the old, uh, prostate checked. Oh, bro. I have to get that done. Yeah. I think I'm going to give myself another 20, 30 years. I think. Have you ever had it done? I don't think so. Oh if my I God. did, I don't think I would mention it with in front of our, the pod. Well, it's a thing, man. You get, it's you got, you get it done at like 42 or something. It, I, I don't, it's, it, it's a necessary evil, but like it sucks. It's an evil or right? It sucks. You're like in front of some dude and you're like, okay. Do they do that with um, I, animals too? They take their temperature that way. Every oh. time you go to the vet, they're like, whoop. My dogs are always like, whoop. They're like, whoop. And I don't like I it. I take my temperature that way. You don't. Oh, you do? So. <laughs> yeah. Prostate. Got to go. So yeah, they don't need, it's not, it's dogs have to deal with this all the time and cats probably too, right? Yeah. They don't care though. It's like, you know, it's different for part of the course. Yeah. So that's, that's the, that's the vet recommendation. It's pretty sweet. What about the other one? What about the, the muzzle? You want to do the muzzles? Should we dive right into the muzzle? I think we should. That's the main topic of today. We're not wasting time. Remember? Remember? Never. We're, We're just not. getting right in. I'm going to do an unboxing. Like my kids watch unboxing videos. Okay, so muzzles, ready? I use a muzzle in the same way that I use a fence and a leash. I use it as a tool to be phased 
or faded out eventually. This is my favorite kind of muzzle. I do not like the muzzles that keep the dog's mouth closed. They can't drink on it. Um, I like the mouth to be free, to be open. It's less, um, it's less like restrictive. They feel like they can open their mouth. This is soft. I've seen people with muzzles and they like have, it's, it's rubber and they have this big metal basket muzzle. That's like giant over the dog's nose. And I'm just like, it just seems weird to me. And then I've seen the ones that just cover the mouth and I'm like, they're comfortable or not. I'm just, I I'm just a Baskerville muzzle that. fan. Yeah. I'm like just that guy who's on YouTube and who's making fun of the general leaders. No? Oh it's yeah. Intense. Huh? So wow. this is my favorite muzzle. Baskerville, they can drink from right there. Their nose goes out there. It's just a good product. It's soft. Right? You can see me squishing it. So as dogs, what dogs will do is they'll like try to bite and they'll hit the other dog. So it's not um, it's not that hard, right? It's not super soft, but that's so my favorite muzzle. Is the purpose of a muzzle only to stop bites? Is there any other use or no? No. That wouldn't feel that great. Though. No, it wouldn't feel good. To, it doesn't feel good. I'm sure if bite. that, that uh, what was it? Australian cattle dog that went up on Prince and went like, bam, I'm sure Prince was not happy about it. No, Prince will react when he tries to get bit on a muzzle because it doesn't feel good. Yeah, that's actually stronger plastic or uh, rubber than I thought it was going to be. Oh, really? It's more plasticish than rubberish. It has like a rubber yeah, feel hard. to it, but it's, you could hit someone over the head with that thing. Yeah, it wouldn't feel good. Yeah. So here's how I use a muzzle. I, I did three freaking sessions today, dude. Like I had four scheduled. I don't know how I got down to three. They all used muzzles today. And then all of them minus one actually two of them were off the muzzle at the end of the session they were all aggressive dogs so we had a i had a very successful day of sessions um but they all use muzzles because dogs need to meet other dogs and how do you get a dog close to another dog while being safe mm -hmm. it is this thing right here and then once the dog has shown you that they can that they're not going to bite another dog you take this off I'm a big fan of using a gentle leader in conjunction with the muzzle. So the gentle leader is under and connected, muzzles over it. And then when the dog lunges, you can just go like this. And the dog's head turns away from the dog. You have mm -hmm. more control of the aggressive dog going to another dog. If you're not that strong, here's what I always say. When an aggressive dog is meeting another dog on a gentle leader and it has a gentle leader on, it can lunge at a dog like as they're meeting. It can do this. It'll get two inches closer to their dog before I pull. And the, the place with the teeth get pulled away. If a dog is on a normal collar, it's going to get a foot closer to the other dog. Yeah. It's going to be able to bite the other dog because I just Hear don't that. have the control. It's, it's going to pull my arms a little bit. What was that? About a foot, right? I'm yeah. going to get that far. On a gentle leader, I can just do this. What was that? Two inches. It's a big difference controlling the mouth or the snout versus the um, the neck. It's the difference between going to the veterinary emergency group and not going to the veterinary emergency group. And if you put a muzzle on, then you don't need to probably go in most cases. And anyways. if you put a muzzle on, you don't need to at all. That's yeah. right. That's exactly right. So here's here's the. Why don't you make uh, Why don't you make Prince wear a muzzle? I know. In the last podcast, I was watching our last one, and you're like. Oh yeah, so Prince is special. Like every every podcast, you're like, oh yeah, so your dog's special, I guess. He doesn't um, have to follow the same rules that everyone else does. Yeah, because uh, he doesn't start dog. fights. Yeah, and, and because well, and because he doesn't start fights. Your facility, your rules, right? And because he doesn't start fights. Yeah. So here's the thing with muzzles. Um, dogs don't know that they can't bite on a muzzle. That's what many people, and I realize like my videos are in Ukraine How do you and my know videos that? are in Iran or maybe in Iran. The, and so the people have maybe in my videos are going to nod non dog people. And so like, I get that these comments, but they, it seems so silly to me that somebody goes, oh, a dog thinks it can't bite when it's in a muzzle. Why the hell would a dog think it's can't, can't bite when it's not in a muzzle? Why would a dog's brain in any way work in that way? And I know you're probably like, I didn't know that. Like no. right now, I think you're like, uh, 
No, I He's agree with you. He's talking about me. No, I agree with you. Smart. Only I was going to say like, how do you know for sure? But I then I thought of my my own. Think thought. of your own. No, as an example, I was thinking of the cattle dog going at Prince. Well, think of that, any of that, my. If videos. he knew he couldn't bite, he probably wouldn't have went out and tried to bite Prince in the back of the leg. Think of every video with a muscle. They. They, they try to bite anyways. They right? try to bite. They're, yeah. I've slowed on the videos. Their mouth is opening in the muzzle. Like, the, Here's what they think, though. It Muzzles change behavior. Fences change behavior. Leashes change behavior. Any of these tools change behavior. The best way for aggressive dogs to meet is in the middle of a field with the owners 50 feet away. I said it a thousand times. It's also the most dangerous way for dogs to meet in the middle of a field 50 feet with no and tools. slow, right? What do you mean slow? It takes longer if you're going to have to be 50 feet away to start working with two dogs, right? No, like the best way is just dogs in a field running up to each other or meeting each other with oh. the owners away, dogs with no leashes that can cause anxiety, muzzles that can cause like, what is this thing? Fences that some dogs have fence fighting. They've rehearsed fence fighting. So they could be actually okay in the middle of a field, but through a fence, they're triggered because they've rehearsed fence fight. Like these things all have their drawbacks but they're necessary drawbacks so we're not going to the veterinary emergency group so you use them that's you've used that a lot of times well it's just when i say go to vet i'm just going to say veterinary emergency group because i like them we should put their hotline down at the bottom of the screen yeah i'm just a fan man i couldn't believe it i saw how the sausage was made you know, you, they don't you do that. This, you don't vets don't do that as much. I've been hard on vets on this podcast, obviously. Crazy hard. Crazy hard on them until you meet a good one. And then, and and I asked her if, if people, if other people are doing this, she said, nah, not really. So there are good ones. We should get them on the podcast and ask them about their um, neutering young dog stance. Sure. Well, we'll get the lady that I met. She was good. She was a good vet. So they know they have something on their face. They don't know that it stops them from biting. The change in behavior you see when a muzzle on is not due to the dog going, I can't bite. It's due, due to the dog going, there's something weird on my face. When people come and their dog's on a gentle leader, guess what? I know they're going to be 80% better on the muzzle because they're already used to a thing on their face, maybe 90%. The thing on their face is what causes them to be like, what's this on my face? And behavior change, the behavior change is not due to the dog going, this sucks. I can't now bite that dog. They all still try to bite a dog when they're in the muzzle. So you're saying that the people in the comments might not be right after all? Yeah, they 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 might have their facts wrong a little bit. Do you have any more questions about muzzles that I can answer? Yeah. First one, people why are they, why is Baskerville not paying us for that endorsement? I don't know. Second would be, are we ever going to get a different muzzle sponsor now that you've just went on and said Baskerville is the best? That's a rhetorical question. Um, the answer is no. What if we tell the muzzle sponsor that Joel could say um, he oh, yeah, was wrong? Like this with the, the eye. Oh, yeah, we could do that. Yeah. The best muzzle oh, yeah. ever. If you watched our 10th podcast or whatever, this is my signal to you guys that I'm hawking a product that I actually hate, but they're paying me a lot of money. But you're not doing it with that one, right? I like it. So I think that was the one right before Dog Daddy, if I remember right. Okay. So I think it was like podcast 14. Oh yeah, and that's if joke. we if we um tell you how great um Beneful is. Beneful? The dog food. Oh. And uh Purina? Uh, yeah. Purina. The, the Purina. It's great dog food. Really good for your dog. Ah. Any more on muzzles? Okay, you guys use them so your dog doesn't bite and fade them out. So you're going to learn about your dog. The dog still thinks it can bite. Once it's not trying to bite, it gets you through the meeting process. Everyone stays safe. And you go, oh, my dog actually isn't looking to bite anybody. I didn't know that. He barked and lunged on the leash. I thought he wanted to attack dogs, but he actually likes female dogs. And then you pop that muzzle off. Now your dog has a friend. First time ever your dog has a friend. That's, that's all my sessions. By the way, it's 80%, 60% of my sessions are people coming out so their dogs can get with a group of dogs because I know how to use muzzles, fences, leashes, prints, and the, uh, my facility to get dogs with other dogs. So as we reach the 25-minute mark, I wanted to see if we could do a 
sanity common sense check where we remind people that if you want to put a muzzle on your dog, then go ahead and do it. And don't worry about what the idiots next door think about a muzzle or what a, what's the other one? Gentle leader, right? Or sorry, a halter. Halty, gentle, gen, yeah. head halter. Head halter. Yeah. I, I, I want to use it, but the people say something to me when I walk by. Yeah. Or this the, is where we say, hey, yeah. we don't care what those people next door. They don't know what they're talking about. Yeah. Tell them to look up Beckman dog training if they have questions. Yeah. Doesn't matter. The gentle leader, people think it's a muzzle. They do. A lot of people think a jet, a head halter is a muzzle because it goes over the nose. And that's one reason they don't want to use the gentle leader. The head halter is such can't a can't be done, man. You can't do I it. I can't, I can't do it. The head halter is such a trip. People, I go, okay. And I put it on their dog and their dog is crazy pulling and it's changing their life. They like the dog pulling them down the street and they broke their elbow because their dog pulls. I put a gentle leader on their dog is 90% better instantly. And this isn't everybody. This is occasionally, but it happens a lot. And they go, okay, so when can I get this thing off? <laughs> like, why? Like, who cares? Yeah. No, like, it's, it's a $20 product. They're embarrassed. Is that it? The, Susie, Karen down the street said that she was abusing her dog. It's who cares? Like it's a stupid thing that goes over the dog's nose and it just saved your life. Like keep using it. Hey, uh, I'm trying to think of another example. Like, um, Oh, this kid, this thing helps my kids so much. Um, it's, it's, but like, you know, when do we stop using it? Like your dog needs it. Your kid needs it. Like for five years. How it's about like that? Riddle in, right? Yeah. But yeah, a little different, I would say. You do want to say keep, when, keep we, using it or not using no, it. At all? Get your kid off it. Okay. Unless your kid needs it. I have three kids. You have three kids. Like, I don't know. Yeah, that's um that's interesting, huh? Yeah. So any more questions on a muzzle? Not that you have any, but I think they're fantastic. I should get one for my cat. Yeah. The bangle scratches, bites. A lot of people. Mm, yeah. I don't think there's a cat muzzle on the market. We're going to start one if there's not. Hey, can I read this email? Yeah. Was it good? I didn't read it. What I wanted know? to read it live. Really? Yeah. What did you see? I don't know. Right before this podcast. How do you know it was worth reading if you didn't read it? I don't. Okay. So I, I read the first line and I was like, okay, I want to read this on air live. I have not read it. I, I It's from Sophie. I'm not going to say her last name because she emailed me, right? Okay. And it says, Dear Joel Beckman. It, oh, conflicted is, is what it says. So I'm already interested, right? And, and I read the first line. I'm a dog-trainer skeptic. I, I don't know if that means she's a dog trainer or she's just a skeptic of dog training. Dog-trainer skeptic. So she's a dog trainer skeptic. Why'd she put a dash in between dog and trainer? She's not a trainer skeptic. She's like a dog trainer. Okay. Skeptic. Okay. Only because I watched so many videos of supposed experts. Oh, I read up until the next line. And that's why I want to read this live. The last couple of months I've turned in, I've tuned into yours. I have to admit at first, I was not convinced of your ability to humanely rehabilitate dogs. I initially felt your methods were not too harsh, but your language was self-effacing. That's when I stopped reading. What does self-effacing mean? Sounds like a uh, question for the old you don't Google know. machine. I don't know. Self-effacing. I want to know if I come across as self-effacing. And that's when I stopped reading. Okay. I realize like a brain surgeon, you need to have confidence, ultra confidence, in fact, to deal with the various breeds you do. I am all almost committed to your way of training, but not quite. You recently questioned a trainer, not sure the name, George Cox rings a bell. Don't know who that is, but it does say self-effacing is like E-F-F-A, which is yeah, yeah. like efficacy probably, not claiming attention for oneself, retiring and modest. That does nothing for us. She's saying self, she's saying you're self-effacing. Yes. That's like humble, right? Oh. That's tending nice. to make oneself, one's actions inconspicuous. Oh, it's humble. Especially because of humility or timidity. And you're definitely not timid or I modest, initially so you felt your humble. methods were not 
not too harsh, but your language is self-effacing. That's good. Yeah, you're not bragging all the time. Okay, so she thought I talked about someone named George Cox. I have no idea who he is on stage. I haven't Googled him, but you had issue with his positive training ideology. I'm a previous dog owner. You know who she's talking about, right? Yeah. Okay. I just lost, occurred to me. I am a previous dog owner, lost mine, and frankly, could have done with your help years ago. I saw recently you did a list of your preferred possible respected dog trainers. Oh, literally haven't read this. I would love for you to look at this man. He is Australian. His business was running a doggy daycare until COVID stopped his business. Okay, now it's getting boring. Thought it was going to be better than this. Well, that's why you got to read the emails <laughs> before you read. Yeah, but online. okay, we 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 in front we of the 10, 15,000 people. We, that told, are we told the viewers what self effacing means. True. That's good. Yeah. We try to be educational on this. Yeah, we did. A and great we try job. to be spur of the moment. We've done both. We and have people to like that too. Well, we have, then we have to make some errors like this. Can we talk about spur of the moment for a second? Can I just, I have watched many programs with the dogs. Never have I seen anything so effective. This man and his family are, in my opinion, the real deal. I would love for your thoughts, constructive criticisms. Frankly, I have never seen anyone more effective until I started paying attention to your videos. If you're interested, his name is Luke. Now we're plugging Luke Evans. Who's that? That's the guy she's talking about. Some Australian oh. dude. Oh, never heard of him. You'll, no, no, no. Think you'll find him on the farm using, okay. All right. Luke Evans. She wants me to watch Luke Evans. She Someone emailed me watch to watch Luke and Evans. And they'll tell us how good he is. Everybody. Okay. If anyone likes Luke Evans, an Australian dude, I hmm. thought it, I thought it was going to be a little better, that email. Yeah. Well, you notice thinking about, um, was the Speaking of, of spur of the moment. Spur of the moment. It was just about, Somebody had commented about they like the kind of off the cuff nature of the podcast. Yeah. It reminds me of every speech, every PowerPoint, everything you've ever seen in your life where someone goes, all right, you know, we're going to cover this. And it's some like gnarly PowerPoint presentation. It's like 10 pages, real small font. And then you realize they're going to read the entire thing. Oh, and everyone just worst. shuts down. They're oh. like, oh, it's like you sit there with a piece of paper and you just start reading. You're like, no, no, I'm going to read this from this. And everyone's like, please don't read that. <laughs> Dude, does that happen in your world? Oh yeah, really? If people start, if people start he, reading something, he's, like just, a, he's got a normal job. Yeah, I got like a corporate job, and yeah. if people do that, I'll just, I just tune them out. I just go, I I'm bet. not listening to anything they're gonna say. They, oh, and yeah. it's like if you're gonna create, like if you're gonna read off a document, just email me the document, I'll read it. I don't oh. need you to read it to me. So that's what you felt when I started to read that email. No. Oh, good. No. Oh, you're just saying. No, you can. I mean, it's spur of the moment right you didn't even know it was in there that's, I mean, that's true pretty pretty impressive no no i don't think you should have to synopsis i like to read um the comments because i like to hear the exact and you got to know what to what comes to read yeah what they're saying and so forth so i do think that we should do a couple comments though but do you have other stuff you want to talk about first there was one other thing go ahead comments so oh it was that voicemail we oh. gave out our vo the voicemail for this last time should we save that for later yeah, that okay. was pretty wild. Comments, Comments from the wild. last podcast. Comments from the haters. Two pot. Oh, apology segment too. Two comments, two podcasts ago, we interviewed Dog Daddy. Last podcast, we had not even seen the reaction because we did it sort of out of order a little bit. Mm -hmm. That's and true. now we're live. Yeah. We did a Tuesday podcast, Friday podcast, Tuesday podcast. And then I was gone all last week. And. No one even knew because we had had to do them yeah. in order because of yeah. uh, you're in Maui. You were you went somewhere where you sh where the celebrities told you you shouldn't go. Yeah. How how did you did you mess up everything? Everything's this, ruined now. The celebrities were like, dude, who listens to freaking I'm who listens to celebrities? Can you imagine a worse group of people yeah. to like go? Oh, you really you're really smart and you really. Like, you know what the normal person's going through. I'm going to listen to you. These people know nothing. <laughs> like, for instance, so... I, I don't even want to talk crap about Jason Momoa because I know he's Aquaman and I don't, I never watched it. But he seems, if you guys don't know who Jason Momoa is, I barely know who he is. He's the big, huge buff guy that looks like he's Game of Thrones. Australian or something. Is he? Yeah, yeah. That's where he got to start. Oh, I didn't know that. Okay. Yeah. So anyways, he's... Oh yeah, he was Khaleesi's husband, yeah, right? Yeah, okay, yeah. gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, okay, I didn't know that. Okay, I like him more because of that. Yeah, he's, he's cool. Yeah. All right. Well, he says, I think he's from Maui or something. He says, "Don't go." Right. He basically yeah. told everyone not to go. Well, yeah. Everyone on the ground is saying the opposite, right? <laughs> but just as somebody who broke the rules and went anyways, because yeah. my dad lives there, 
Um, it's total nonsense. So even the mayor. Wait, Jason Momoa uh, said something total nonsense. I don't believe it. Yeah, he's so smart. Some actor, some A-list actor. Yeah, no. So he said, just don't go. And I get it. As there's timing, there's another guy's UFC fighter who I totally love. So I'm not going to give him and a hard time. And he said, don't go. He said, don't go. But he was on a podcast, and I don't know, or they were recording. They're playing what he was saying, and I think it was from a podcast. So I don't want to judge him because it could have been like the next day he said it. Yeah, versus like possibly the day of the fight in which, you know, and yeah. anyone who knows UFC now knows who I'm talking about because he just recently fought. But anyways, the point of it is that um, I give him, you know, maybe, yeah, maybe it was two, three weeks later and th things on the ground had changed. Now, what I can yeah. tell you, if you guys want to know the real deal, is that obviously downtown Lahaina proper, yeah, they've shut it down. It's fenced off and they're doing like a whole like... Um, hazmat type thing oh yeah because of i guess they Smoke. built with more or less some a product that had arsenic in it and so that's kind of the asbestos yeah. of the hawaiian world more or less but they say you know everything is is open except west maui but that's also not really true too because um north of of lahaina is like hanakoi napili kapalua people that have been there they know well, those are businesses that were not burned and that are still there. And so we went and patronized a business or two while they're there and there was nobody there. And it's like these people that own businesses like fishing shop, um, yeah. they want to, uh, yeah, fish market and stuff like that. There's nobody there. There'd be people out no one's the on the island. Well, yeah. And it doesn't help that people are saying, don't, don't come here No, when, especially people that, that probably don't even really live there anymore. Yeah. But so it's like, you got, I think it shows you have to be careful with your language, right? Especially when you're in a position of power, so to speak. Yeah. Or, and so I'm hearing, this is while I was there last week that I'm hearing that mayor say, yeah, West Maui is closed. It's like, go tell that to the business owners that are north of where burned. Like there's literally a detour that takes you right past the burn and you go right past and you go up and patronize all the businesses. So yeah. it's, it's a little annoying, but what are you going to do? So, um, that's what I was doing. How did we get on that topic? Oh, that's why Spur we weren't. Moment. That's why we weren't um, alive. That's why. So we we're, we're going to read comments from our last podcast, which is what we do for the pod, as we call them. And before I do that, I'm going to ask you a fantastic question about breed of the week. So you are going to tell me everything that you possibly know about this dog in 15 seconds, and that is the Anatolian Shepherd dog. I don't know Stumped a lot. You. I don't. Uh, here's what I know about him. Huh. I've trained two of them. Um, one, I went to someone's house. Um, he was like six months old. I brought Prince in and the dog was like, what's up, bro? Like, are, are we, are we doing this? Yeah. He was, he was ready to roll. Like, not like how long, rah, 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 rah. How long? Yeah. Two years. Three years? Was it Bosco? No, it was Prince. Prince was a young buck. Prince was time. a year and a half, probably. Wow. And the dog wasn't like rah rah. Like he was all subdued and like like holding himself back. But he's like meeting Prince. He's like, yeah, I'm six months old. I, I I can take you. I know I can take you. Um, but their problem really wasn't dog stuff. So it's like we didn't need to do the Prince thing. Mm -hmm. Here's the other thing I know about him. I watch videos on him on freaking Instagram. And and they these 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 you know, Azerbaijan people or, you know, that yeah. region of the world, Anatolia, I guess they like get them with other ones. And these dudes are, and people in the comments go, Oh yeah. Put Prince with a Anatolian shepherd and see what happens. Like you all put a muzzle on him too. It's yeah. going to be fine. <laughs> and we'll put a fence in front of them. They're just, they're, 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 they can guard against wolves. They're badass dogs. They're right? badass. Dude. How much do they weigh? How much is the average male weigh? Since I do this to you every time. You need to I see videos up. of big ones. Like, cause those are the ones that make the videos. Average the big one. male. 105 pounds. Eh. Oh my God. The range is 110 to 150. Bro, I was, for males. okay. I wasn't close. You weren't even on Wikipedia. This is American Kennel Club. Okay, I set you. my game up. Thank you. Thank you. So All right, I was just way... based on what I think. I think one... that the average male is probably about 29 inches. Female, probably 27. Um, they're one to five on the affectionate with the family. Good. They're with one children. out of five. That's what they say. Yeah, they're not. That's three not out good. of five with good with children. It's not horrible. Good with other dogs. Three out of five. Um, social. 
I thought this was interesting. Openness to strangers, one out of five. Reserved yeah. is what they call it. Playfulness. They're, they're about as less open to strangers as any breed. Yeah. Does that mean they well. hate all strangers? No, it means they're one out of five what in the you, breed comparison to a golden retriever being a five. What do you think their watchdog protective nature? One out of five? One through five. What do you, what do you say? Five out of five. <laughs> You're right. Five out of five. Adaptability level. Lives for routine or highly adaptable? What would you say? That's a weird question. What dog lives for routine or is high? Like, what a weird question about a dog. What dog lives for routine? It's a serious question. Same with humans. Okay. I'm going to say they would say that guy is a, uh, he lives for routine. Uh, three out of five. Oh, okay. That was kind of a nothing burger right well, there. Well, let's find the five out of five or the one out of five. Like, I guess you could say, well, a golden retriever doesn't need a routine. The affectionate with family, Some. one out of five is kind of interesting. Lovey dovey, no, it's independent. That's what it got. It is independent. Yeah. One out oh, of five. yeah. It's not a couch dog. It wants to great Pyrenees and them and stuff. They want to yeah, sit. I screenshotted on those. your property. Good I job. like that. Next time when we do one, I'll screenshot some of those and we can go through that. Remember? We've wanted to do Our that. Our breed the of the week is getting better. Barely. <laughs> Barely. But so think about where I got that genius idea from. Screenshotting something? From the comments. Mm. Oh, no, no. I got Anatolian Shepherd from one of our commenters. Yeah. And I just thought that's on. I actually, what I did is I went and looked at what it looked like. And then I was like, okay, that passed the test. Yeah. It's cool. Dog. It's big enough that I thought it was cool. So um, not that they all have to be big, but they have to be interesting in some That'd way. That'd be cool. But yeah, there's um on the American Kennel thing, they have like family life, physical, social, and personal, I think. And then, or maybe it's personality. It's cut off. I think it's probably personality. But it gives like three or four per per um, category. And then they just rank them. And so I know Joel did a video, which never got posted, I believe. And that was about um, going through some of the AKC stuff and like seeing if you agree with a lot of their assessments. Oh yeah, and I stuff. did make that. Yeah, but then we did a podcast. We but we didn't I don't know enough about Anatolian Shepherds, like to really have it, you. Hopefully, what people are getting from this podcast or even from my videos, like I'm not going to talk out of school. Like, I, oh, Joel, you're a dog expert. Yeah, no, I've trained two Anatolians. I told you the story of one of them. I barely remember the other one. How do I know everything about Anatolians? I don't. No. I'm not some of these trainers that act like they know. That don't train dogs and then talk about dogs. Yeah, like me, right? You're not, well, you're, you're not a trainer. Sure, sure, sure. All right. How about this one? Laney Design says, I just love the mental image of Joel in a meeting with other trainers like Trainer A. Chill, like he does uh, to Prince when he gets too much. Ha ha. But in all seriousness, I've unsubscribed from so many trainers I used to follow because of the recent videos being hateful hateful toward other trainers instead of how to train dogs. I enjoy following both sides for different things, like Joel for problems and purely positive for tricks as an example. But the war is getting ridiculous. Interesting, huh? Yeah. There may be a time and a place for me to um, give Way my in. full unfiltered opinion on it. Uh, I am not going to go piecemeal and sort of weigh in every week on the dangerous battle that's going on right now. And um, when I'm when I'm ready to really go ham, go at it, I may do that. But I do think last week, which was like two weeks ago when we actually did it, that one, I think we pretty much covered it fairly well with just like a, I think a number of the commenters were really happy that especially you decided to take the high road and just be like, Hey guys, let's do a better job working together and not, Oh, and deescalate the situation and so forth. And I've been watching a bit of it back and forth a, cause it's kind of our job. And I know you don't like to really get too much into it, but I still like to let you know what's going on yeah, uh, on the field, so to speak. Yeah, yeah. But, um, but yeah, I think ultimately, um, and, and this is not really my place to say, and yet it's podcast, so I'm going to say it anyways. But I get the initial reaction to some of Dog Daddy's videos, especially because they're taken out of context. Not that they're taken out of context, but they're just shorts. So you don't get any type of background. There's no context. Yeah, there's no, they basically just see a dog get the leash handed over and then it starts reacting and then yeah. he starts calming it down. But 
so I, I understand that people are going to see videos out of context and they're going to react. Um, and I think some people are going to have a negative, um, reaction. I remember just, I remember the first time I saw, um, that meat eater guy on Netflix, I saw him do one of his hunts. Like he shot like a bear. And I was like, dude, that was freaking horrible. You know what I mean? And it was like, I didn't know whether he eats the bear or like, if there's any like reasons to shoot a bear, I didn't know. And I'm not saying that it's necessarily a good thing, but, um, but I had that that initial response, right? That was kind of like, I don't know what you call that, where you like- Yeah, gut reaction. Visceral, yeah, visceral, yeah, visceral. response to something. And so I understand that people have that, but sure. you should maybe dig deeper if you're gonna like dedicate your life to trying to destroy somebody. I'm gonna talk about it when it's time to talk about it. When you're ready, when you're amped? Yeah, we gotta like, like I, I, to a degree, get both sides but boy i mean there's there's a lot that goes into it and uh one side uh, i'll get into it when when i'm ready to get into it okay i'm not gonna just give little bits and pieces like each week you're gonna hit you're gonna hit him with the sledgehammer when you're ready i it, yeah yeah the a bomb okay. there are yeah there are there's a lot that can be done about this thing um that is like a an ender, you know. Not to yeah. say it will end, but like it's it would get a lot of people's like feathers in a ruffle. Is that a term? Yeah. Uh, the feathers. In a way, on both sides, but like this this thing is not that. In a way, it's like deep, like like it's animal rights at this point. Like that's a that's a hundred year, hundred and twenty year fight that is never been resolved and there's been violence involved and it's 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 deep in that way but in a way it's like not complicated at all this fight between this group and this group in the dog training world is actually like very um very simple and it can be it can be sort of summed up very simply and it's I don't think it can be summed up that simply though. Not that simply. Because people are confused, but I have a different comment, which I was going to wait till the end. But now that we're like on this exact topic, okay. it's not controversy related so much, but it's something that I feel feel like when the final like Beckman biography, autobiography, whatever, whenever that gets written, this should be in there, which is like the really the roadmap of dog intervention, right? Like when you do what you do, like, do you know the term Lima? least invasive in, yeah um most aversive or something like that i don't know what it is but so like there's all these like kind of uh you know decision making on along this journey of yeah. like leave the dog in the backyard like we said a few weeks ago or you know and just let it do whatever it wants or put it on a leash and put it on a go generator. The world. yeah go in the world right um so this was actually from that conversation i believe Mr. Dynamart said, who had a number of, of comments, uh, but he said, and of course I love it because he says good point, Eric, by misbehaving the dog has initiated the force. So responding to it rather than starting it is not immoral and therefore okay. And the idea is like, it gets deep into the leashes and stuff, right? But so this gets deeper, Mike Lajure, who's been a heavy hitter on comments here. Um, oh. He does quite a few of them as I'm sure you remember, but um so I won't go too much in about, I want to skim a few of this and I know this might haze some people over, but I think people that are interested in this controversy might get some benefit from it. So, so it's like this, there is a whole lack of clarity in the use of the word force in this current dog training mini war force has no moral quality. When we force open a door that is jammed, nobody sane calls that violence. You with me so far? Yeah. So but you know you are using force if you're using the leash no matter how lightly that is some measure of force being used or held and reserved to be used any leash correction is a use of some measure of force even leash guiding for those who askew yeah. leash pops yeah. is a use of force of course so then we need to go a bit further and think about violence as force with a moral quality and to consider if all violence is the same quality Initiating violence in my book is generally bad and allowing violence is most often bad. So defending myself against violence. So you kind of get where he's he's taking us. And I'm not gonna read the entire thing because it's pretty long, but you're getting how it's like, are we against all guiding with the leash? Right. So there if we take like my goal eventually would be to write this out to where 
like, or you write it out rather, but like where we take it from the very beginning of like, there is going to have to be some force involved in training dogs, right? If we just sit there and relax and just watch, we're probably not even doing any force. Some people would say yelling is force, right? So just so you know, when I said it's actually not that complicated, like we're going down the road that I don't want to go like down. Road? No, no. Here's why. We're trying to explain like the subtleties in this argument. Mm -hmm. And that would be like, there's all these people right now that are trying to say, yeah, but I want this person to look at this study. And this other person says, yeah, I want you to look at this study. None of it matters. Like we're dealing with, we're dealing with entrenched sides that are not looking at studies that 1% of these sides, 1% of the population of each of these sides is going to be changed by studies. Like we're, we're like, Oh, what does force mean? Like none of it matters. Like no one. And yeah, I don't mean to, I don't mean to dismiss your thing. This is a bigger, this is a much bigger deal than studies or the definition of force. This is, this is emotion. And this is, this is 120 years of animal rights. This is people that are, are, are ground swelling up from animal rights. And I said in a video, taking over the, um, the, the, um, force-free world. And, and this is sort of, this is a thing. This is, that's what's happening. And there's a, certain segments of the population, they don't care about studies and they don't care about the definition of force. They care when you believe that a dog or a cat is the exact same value as a human being or a baby the exact same value, then you will use physical violence or any means necessary and you will not feel bad about it to hurt the person that you feel is doing something to something that is as important as a six-month-old child. They don't feel bad. They won't understand they won't understand, they, they don't comprehend that there's any difference between a human and a dog, yet we're talking about, they don't care. Bro, this is deep. This is, now I'm getting into it. I think I've got. Why'd you get me into I, this? Can I explain bro? why I think I'm right and you're wrong? Yeah. Okay, so um, you know how you see like, sometimes they call them like process flows or like, um, have you seen these words like, you know, no, I'm not in human, your world is a human or, you know, your corporate, you go world. like, is a, it's a little bit doggish and corporate. -ish. Okay. Go ahead. But like, so you would say to somebody, so like you could create like a, not even a study, but a series of questions. It's kind of like some Plato or Aristotle type stuff where it's like, you can ask the questions to tease out like what direction you go down. Great. So you would say like, so like you could answer, you could take people down every road and you could solve it with like questions. And then you could basically say, so like, uh, you could just have, you know, ask a hundred people and you go, first question would be, are, do human, you know, is the value of all human life equal to the value of every dog life? Right. Yes or no. I and then you go, yes. And then they go, they go down the different swim lane, right? Well, so you point them down these different directions. You start asking yes. these questions. Yes. So then if, but if somebody says, um, you could actually go three ways, right? You could say like, are they equal to, or baby dogs are more important, right? And then if you 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 break it towards like scientifically, I get it. in this question now you're saying that dogs are equal to right. to humans, and then it's like, see, then you have a different series of questions for right. those folks, right. Right. right? But it could very quickly be like, but you see, if you go like say three questions in, then you can basically go, okay, so you think that there's never a reason when you should ever be able to put a dog on a leash or right. do this. And then you go, okay, we're done here, bro. Yeah, no, that's exactly so right. So it's like you, you base that's right. like, but what about the, the 85%, I think that are not that crazy. Yeah. But that's not the people that are protesting dog daddy. Yeah. But I, I mean, we will, I wasn't talking about dog daddy per se, but I mean, mm. since you brought him up, I think like, but still, the point is, is to communicate to the entire world, right? 
here's the philosophy and he, here's why here's why there's nothing wrong with using a leash, right? Here's why the dog's life is actually better for using a leash. Here's why the life is a uh, dog's life is better for using the the gentle leader or sorry, the head halter or the uh the Baskerville muzzle. muzzle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Why is it it's not it's never okay to put um a, a muzzle on a dog because it's okay, uncomfortable. Yeah, you're in this category. Yeah, we stop. Yeah, you just stop. You're like, okay, yeah. well then yeah. you'll never understand. Um, yeah. but then there's also like, can we prove that some a dog's life is better with the muzzle? But I don't the, the people I'm talking about, like they don't, they're not gonna be proven to. Yeah, but I'm not worried about proven to them. I'm proving I want to prove to the other 85% of people that can take people down a logical path and show them that. No, your way actually is worse for dogs. More dogs get put down because of your way, not less. So that you can arm more people with the facts so that they can go, oh, you believe that dogs are more important than humans. And you believe that, you know what I'm saying? So that's like, yeah. those are the things I think that a decent amount of effort could be done to like really simplify for people. So they know like, oh, this person is literally completely different from me as far as what they believe. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, I guess in a way it's complicated in a way it's simple. I think I've dealt with, um, animal rights more than most. And I've seen, uh, I've seen what they're capable of. Yeah. And, um, it's, um, you know, you're dealing with a different breed. What about SeaWorld? No pun intended. Yeah. What about SeaWorld? So SeaWorld, that's probably where you got your first taste of this? No, before SeaWorld. Really? Oh, yeah. in the, the school? Yeah, exotic animals. What was their stance? What was their stance? I mean, they were all for it, right? I mean, they were for... Animal rights? They weren't... For no. my school? Animal rights is a terrible word. Really? Because it's like saying, like, oh. you're you're more park or whatever, or whatever that was. It's called more park. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. So it's like... Were they for animal? No, they were against animal rights. It's like sounds like you can't really win saying I you're not going to say I'm against animal rights. Like animals should have yeah. some rights. It's it's right? the it's the term. It's a misnomer, right? It's, it's a misnomer. It's yeah. a, it's trying to simplify something. Yeah, it's a difference of opinion, but yeah, yeah. everyone's for animal rights. Yeah, it's like it's like uh Yeah, the very positive. nature of animal rights is that uh, uh as it started is essentially that animals are the are the same value as people. What about, do you think that, uh, if that, and many people think that well, many, many people think that. And I would say, I'd say, do you have children? Many, no one with children believes that. Is that why you always ask these people in the comments when they're like, I think that I totally disagree with you on this. And you go, do you have, well, you don't that's, have kids. And then they go, how do you, how did you know I don't have kids? I know. That's why I asked that. The children change everything. Um, you, you cease to become an animal rights activist when, uh, when you have kids. What are some protections? And we didn't go into this at all. Because your child's life, uh, um, um, you can't say it's the, it's worth this. If you love your children. I know people that don't actually like their children. I know people that you can just sense um, they very much dislike their children and they love their dog more than their child. I, I It's it's rare, um, but it's it's weird, but it's there. There are people like that. Um, there, so there's, there's some people that, that which is very strange they actually value their dog more than their kid or they value the elephant at the zoo more than their kid but generally speaking if you have children you do not believe your little six-month-old baby's life is the exact same as um, a cat's if you had to make a choice horrible situation between the life of this and the life of this animal rights will not make that choice People. I have a it's terrible very, thing for you, though. It's very, it's it's a weird way to live life, man. So I've heard this thing before. Um, I might give credit for it later, but basically the idea was that basically, you know, humans only care about what's in their actual world to some degree. So like somebody having a heart attack on the other edge of the earth, right? Where we don't know, you know, they're in um, India, they're in wherever. somewhere, wherever, yeah. right? them having a heart attack is like still not as impactful as somebody here stubbing their toe. It sounds crazy, but it's like, you don't know what happened to anybody. I mean, all day something bad happens all over the world. But so yeah. like when you start to think about, well, would you rather have something 
this is so kind of deep but morbid in a sense is like would you rather have something happen to prince or would you rather have this person die like you don't oh, want to answer that question because that is a weird question to you you're like well this is my dog and that becomes it's my dog that is a that is a weird question yeah and that is a very um but i don't think that's the i i don't it's a false choice right oh I my mean, gosh and that that I'm talking about like your own child or your own, you know, dog or your own cat or something, you know, not, I know. not, I mean, but I'm we're, we're not it. talking about, yeah. I'm flipping it to, um, I'm flipping it to your, do your dog and someone else as a human. I'll take my dog. I know that's kind of messed up, huh? Yeah, but I'll take my child of my dog true so there is a hierarchy you want to know my hierarchy that's it the hierarchy but there's probably friends of yours who have kids that you would put them above your dog yes but people that you don't know you probably you know yeah, i'll take my dog people die every day yeah no i mean ultimately one doesn't cause the other so that's it's a good fine. it's a good point actually yeah i i think the thing that i think the thing about a lot of the animal let's call it rights activists. The issue is that they wouldn't be able to get so much traction if there wasn't that emotional ability to show, like for instance, like the mistreating of animals, right? Like most everyone who watches this podcast agrees, like that's totally terrible. Like especially factory farming, a lot of the unnecessary or corners that are cut to save money that most people would see any type of animal abuse and be like, that's not okay. Now, yeah. what I don't like is when I've seen that, because that's like caused me like for a period of time to like look at like veganism, vegetarianism, just because of some of the stuff I saw going on that okay. I was like, I don't feel like that's okay. But when you say that type of stuff happens and then you're saying like what dog daddy, for instance, did, then you're like, well, that they're saying that's animal abuse, right? So that's why it's where it's like, Somebody is not, whether it's me, you, dog daddy, anybody, somebody is not effective at communicating what's happening or everything is just abuse, right? Like there has to be a better ability to be like, when someone's like, that's dog abuse. It's like, but is it dog abuse? Like, you know, it's not there. We're not the first people to, to say that. We're not definitely not accusing him of that, but people are saying this. Yeah, there's 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 governments that are now getting involved with the dog daddy thing. Yeah, the Canadian government may get involved. I mean, there's you know, there's there's yeah, there's there's multiple layers to things, but I I think it's actually not that difficult of a converse of a not of a solution, but like it's pretty straightforward in what's going on in my opinion. And by the way, the balanced side is like going about it all wrong. How so? I'm not going to explain how they're doing it until I'm ready to explain how they're doing it wrong. But they're just... They're bringing a knife to a gunfight. We talked about this. Like, the balanced side is bringing a knife to a gunfight. But I No, I think you're right about that. What I, what I don't... Hey, force-free folks, let's compare studies. They're like, um, yeah, but I see somebody choking a dog and I think dogs are as valuable as my daughter. Like, I don't care about studies. That's what they, 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 what they see is so horrible to them because of their, their, the way that they think that you're not going to reason with them. Why are we reasoning with them? It's if I'm going, bro, why are you getting me into this? I read one comment here. You're getting stuck bro, in. Two comments I read. I will go. <laughs> I will go scorched earth, dude. Like, like if this. There are, are there are people involved and there are people on the outside involved in this that are getting that that I will pull into 
this thing if my children are are I know who these people are. I know who these activists are. They are dangerous people. If my children if their safety is threatened because my safety is threatened then we're we're going we're we're it's it's scorched earth time. It's this isn't read a study and let me try to try to prove to you my side of the thinking. It is it is my children's safety is threatened and everybody I know there's people on there's dog trainers that are on the outside of this that that are trying to on the force free side that are trying not to get involved but are involved we're bringing them all in they're they're getting caught up in this i'm bringing them into the mix and they're and we're going scorched earth on everything because because it's dangerous so if you say stuff that you're not comfortable with you have to edit the podcast <laughs> okay i don't know man I, I think know, I think that um, have you ever seen like I know like politicians and, and people different groups do this, but like like even remember the veterinarian groups from a long time ago. We did that thing about the studies and stuff. Is like th they'll come up with their what do they call it position statements on like certain things. Yeah, I don't think a lot of the balanced trainers have ever really done that, right? And so be, and this is probably because pos position statements are more from the like world of academia, but there is ultimately most people are going to parrot whatever they hear or potentially what they feel. They'll just say it, but there's something to be said about bringing an actual philosophy to the table that you ba basically make it like completely bulletproof to where you're like, look, like. People will hear it and go, oh, yeah, that's totally what I believe, right? And yeah. then you give them the ammunition to be able to Let's say. Let's do it. To say, yeah, to be like, hey, this is it. And like. Let's do it. Like, I would say there is some common ground. Not a lot, but there's some common ground. We go like, hey, look, unnecessarily inflicting any yeah. type of pain on an animal is not okay. We all. Okay. Yeah, we all agree with that. We're going to start from there as, and we're going to take one step forward, right? And we're going to start walking down that road. And yeah. I feel like there's not, there's only a couple people I think that could do this right in the world. Like that could do it really well, especially as it relates to dog training. Now, as far as animals, I'm sure there's other people, but as yeah, far as like walking people through, because ultimately it there's, needs to go down to the other methods because the reason that dog daddy is getting called out is because he is probably closer to the extreme as far as the intervention in the intensity at which he changed the dogs right yeah and they mean to be fair like he was just on the podcast so it's not we're, we're not we're just talking about what we're, we're talking about like we're aware that he's probably could potentially be listening to this and that's okay but it's like this is he is like you know a probably one of the best marketers one of the best uh social media people out there and he is one of the most experienced people with dogs so he is a little bit of a lightning rod because of this Yes. So, but there's got to be some ability to. There is. Is that what you're going to provide for us? It's complicated. I, I could pr try to do it on a, I've thought about it for a long time about some sort of, you know, that guy who did, who did that graph of cr um, crazy. crazy and matrix. Yeah. Yeah. What, what's that called? The guy he did crazy versus it's like a, it's like wife material. And then like crazy. It was like a, the cra it was like crazy woman matrix. Or something. Crazy. Yeah. It would be it would be in that fashion, right? The level of aggression or the the um, uh, dangers to society is kind of here, right? Mm -hmm. And then the the use of force, if you assume that the that that term, if you assume that that's going to help the dog, needs to go here. So you have you have danger to society, danger to people, danger to other dogs, or something, and. And then you have this one going this way and we got to have that almost like he does the shaded area here and he does this here. We yeah. could almost make it that simple. I've thought it's, about calling you with this. Yeah. And, and it's a simple, it's, it's not a simple like graph in which the Y axis would be, um, 
level of intervention. See, and that's why I was going to call you. You like kind of understand how that would be done. I don't yeah. believe I do with the y so axis match made in heaven here yeah so if you go if you go with the x-axis of like the y-axis is going to be level of intervention and then the level on uh, the other side would be the level of aggression or level of danger to society i think you almost have to go danger, danger to, to society to, to more society than... which includes dogs and people as you start to do that like of course it's like you go to the very beginning one step up one step over you go if oh. it's barely any type of danger to society but just we a don't tiny care bit, but then, no, but if we do, it's, you know, it's one level over for danger to society, which is maybe just a quick nip, or maybe it's something even more benign than that, like a, a, st a scary look or something, right? Oh, but then you go from there, and then it goes up one level, a little bit of intervention, a little bit of force of some sort, right? And then it's, as you start to go down there, growling is like here. And then that is like, what's the level of force to stop that? So, and so you, you basically graph it out. Okay. And, and obviously, you're going to have the far ends. So... Here's the, yes. So the problem with what I'm hearing you say though, is you've almost made it already like too simple. Like, like you were explaining it so good. I'm like, but it's not that, it can't be that simple. It can't. I think it is. Because the thing is, is. But, but what if, think what about if, it. what about nervous systems? And like, as you go up in force, you, you, you doesn't matter. No, that for that sort of graph thing, it doesn't matter. Yeah. No, this no, is a no, simple no, it thing. still won't matter because it's still right, right? Because oh. if you were to say whether it depends, and you could do it on different terms, it could be danger to society as an example. And danger to society can cover a lot of ground, right? It could be biting a person, biting a dog. It could be, it could be other genuine like unease. But if you were to take it, now let's say, let's say there's um there's basically um bad you know not great behavior that still is not a danger to society yeah because it's not a danger to society it never merits any increase in force yeah that's what i'm so saying. It's just, it so it still works you know what i mean whereas like the second so i think that's where we stand the second you start putting the lives of children dogs and society as a whole in danger the level of force that should be allowed should but, go up commensurately with yes. the danger. Wouldn't the argument be um, no level of force can help that? The, Wouldn't that be the like argument? The force free people would say. Yeah. So I think if you take it to to a, I think they could try to make that. Um, they should try to make that uh, claim. But when you get to the very far end where it becomes euthanasia, in you never hear people argue this, at least in the comment threads that I've been seeing. I've seen it on the balance side where they say, yeah, but they're going to end up euthanizing some of these dogs. Like, for instance, what, what dog, dog daddy is doing. Um, some of these dogs will be euthanized. And having met him and talked to him, I truly believe he's, I mean, he's worked with, I'm sure, over a thousand dogs. There's almost no doubt that some of the dogs he's worked with would have been euthanized. That's okay, pretty he, fair. And same with you. Some of the dogs that you've worked with, I bet, would have been euthanized. Yeah. Yeah, bro. Like. The, yeah, dog daddy's not working with worse dogs than I'm working with. Really, yeah. it's just no. a different deal. No, I agree. So, so here's the other like argument that that is, I think, the biggest argument is I. There's no video evidence. If they say, "Well, that force wasn't need to be used," I would say, or it doesn't work. I'd say, "Awesome, show me the video of of your con." contradictory uh, method to help that dog. We, we we both agree that dog needs to be helped, correct? And they're going to go, yeah, if you can't just keep the dog in the house and there is some level to, of, of danger to society, I guess we do need to agree that that dog needs to be helped. And then I they go, but, but your way doesn't work. Oh, well, how do you know my way doesn't work? Because you've worked with so many dogs like this? Well, no, because the studies say your way doesn't work. Okay. No one gives a rat's ass about your studies. I don't know how more clearly to say that. They are studies. It doesn't matter. I need the video evidence of you or a trainer like you helping that danger to society dog. And until that happens, none of none of this matters. Yeah, none of what you matter. say matters. No one thinks the studies matter. Nobody thinks it. They are well, studies. Also the people that are even creating the studies, what are the chances they know more than I don't you? care. I don't care about the studies. No, I know your point. Yeah. There's another argument to be made of why would someone creating a study know more than me? It doesn't matter. I want to, 
we have to, people have to stop talking about studies pro and against. There was a trainer recently, a balanced trainer, that was going to compare studies with a positive reinforcement trainer. I'm like, bro, it's enough with the studies. Let's yeah. see the videos. It's like the old the old video you did with the uh, with your dog daddy was on the the uh, thumbnail that we talked about last week. Yeah, um, it's a show us the video evidence, bro. I've said in the comments, and people are like, "Oh, you shouldn't do that," or whatever. And I'm like, "Oh, show me a better way, or show me a something." And they go, they go, they 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 post a video of a person talking about aggression. I know, You're and like, and I literally think they think that's their they've proof. solved it yeah. I, I i i honestly think they think posting a video of a eloquent academic or smart person talking about aggression i believe they honestly think that that is their proof and i don't know what world the people live in that think that someone talking about dog aggression and the way to reduce it is is proof yeah is talking about it so i, I think the analogy I'm so confused at times until i realize really what's going on in their in their head and then i start to go oh like you're so you 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 love dogs as much as your kid this makes sense you can't see them hurt there's no world where you can see them in any sort of uncomfortable situation even if it would help them you you can't you can't take it the the love that like, you have for the dog doesn't allow you to to see that something can help them can i give some of my own parenting experience here sure okay so we have a little debate going on at my house which is the baby is the baby. It's not a baby. There's um, young kids, but young kids are going to bed and then cry basically. And it's like, it's more of a whine than a cry, but it's like, it's not wanting to go to bed. Okay. You know? If you've yeah. had kids, you probably know what this is like, right? Yeah, yeah. So I am of the idea that any type, and you'll be proud of me for this use of words, but uh, any type of intervention in that kid going to sleep is basically you are reinforcing the negative behavior, right? So whether you say, you could say, hi, sweetie, time to go to bed. And you could do this over the phone. You could do it in person. You could also go, quiet down, kid, right? You could do all a bunch of things. You could do all that. And, and people do. And regardless of what it is, my- You could put rum on your finger and put it in their lips like they did 100 years ago. There's a lot of things. 30, 30 years ago. Okay. But, but if you were to think of this, right? In my opinion, any intervention is is basically reinforcing that behavior that you don't want because ultimately they just don't want to go to bed. So anything good or bad that is engaging them is still keeping them up. You're right? not going to love my answer. Well, I'm going to teach you. I'm going to tell oh, you why you're, I'm right. You're not asking my opinion. No, no. I'm going to tell you why I'm right. Well, I'm going to tell you my opinion. So my, here, you got to shut me down after I'm done. So my, so then my wife will keep being like, Hey, hello, stop time to go to bed. And then, it, and then it gets more forceful through I the like, night. I like right? Megan. She, this. she starts going through the, through the night. Right. And I go, and I'm like, can we stop with the, every five minutes saying to go to bed? I was like, just leave her alone and she'll okay. go to bed. So what happens? Eventually we get All into right. it and then she stops and then, and then, um, meaning my, my wife and I get into it and then yeah. she's like, all right, fine. I'm not gonna do it. It's like, we just sit there quietly and she's like, ah, yeah. Seven minutes later, whoosh, yeah, she's out. Yep. There's a lot going on in what you just said. Break okay. it down for me. Okay. Operantly, of, you're correct. You're reinforcing bad behavior. You want the, you want that behavior to go Love away. It. There's also things like um, what's called extinction burst. So before a behavior goes away due to lack of reinforcement, and the baby example is probably the best one, there's others, the behavior will spike. If you can get through that spike, that, that extinction before the extinction, when that behavior spikes, if you can get through that, you then it drops off. And then there's little, little bursts after that, but, but, the, but you got to get through that extinction burst. And that's sometimes very difficult Fit. to get through. It's that final cry of mom's not talking to me. 
Yeah. However, and that's all true and operantly. So I'm right. But yeah, okay. but you you know my, but you may not know my problem with operant conditioning is it's it's very flawed. Okay, it's Skinner with rats and cages and hitting levers and figuring out very vari variable schedules and and extinction schedules and and uh, all. Show these me things. the video, Joel. Show me the video of you doing it better. That's what I have to say. Okay, so here's what I'm going to say. <laughs> oh, got you there. If I was a parent person i would have a video of my child and me doing this process if i had a parenting youtube channel i would absolutely show you the video and i would edit it and i'd show you the video it'd be a long video but we could do it but back i'm not a parent person parent training. okay so so here's the problem with that and the same reason people like my my all stages of life video is your child or any child going to bed ha do you think you understand the baby brain yes. and the trauma, not trauma, the possible fear of going to bed by themselves in a dark room? Do you claim, to, I don't remember how old your son is. Do you claim to know his, the, the, you want to go to sleep. I get it. No, this is not, this is not, um, middle of the night. This is bedtime, 8 PM. Okay. Do you, okay. It's dark out. Yeah, no, I okay. understand. Okay. Do you saying. do you understand a six month old brain? By yes. the way, bro, in a TP, hundreds of years ago, he'd still be in your bed. And I th that to me, now that's not good for the marriage. I get it. But I but but bro, our our son slept in our bed, our last baby. Hey, listen, not, not video, good man. for the marriage and and good for your kid. Those those don't always line up. Till he was like five years old, fifteen. I heard my kids. Yeah, we told you, they slept with you till they were fifteen. No, my children. No, I'm neither of them were fifteen. No. So, or any of them. Um, six years he slept in our bed. Now, am I recommending that? No. Is my child possibly did did I but did all of them do that or just the last one? just the last one because he's the like last the baby. It's all. The but love. here's the thing: like, like was that good? Maybe. Was that bad? Maybe. I don't know. Our parenting philosophy is more it's more about comfort and safety and less about conditioning them to be the way we want them to be. I'm not saying that's your philosophy. I'm saying you get it, You're right? You're sounding a bit force free here. I Great. So I, here, let me let me let me show you an example of effectiveness, which would be a video like you're saying of effectiveness, right? So multiple times. And so if the wife's out of town and I've got the kids, yeah, I go, I tell, I tell the three-year-old, okay. This is effectiveness right now. But I'm saying- Wait till your kid's 14. Okay, well, let's start with that right now. So I go- When I go, the trauma has kicked in and then these things come out at 14, I'm not saying it's gonna happen. I'm not even saying I'm right. I'm saying, I'm there's saying a, wrong. there is a counter argument that we don't know. And when we- compare kids but that gets into the dog stuff that gets into the dog I stuff know. where you go oh, it's okay. all the same so but if you think about this right so if you go okay so i'll sit there i'll go okay listen mommy's not here tonight so dad doesn't do this so i'm gonna put you to bed but once i put you to bed i'll say good night and then you have to go to bed yeah. what happens it's good. five minutes later she's out like a light right now the yep. younger one who's only one i have a different thing which is he'll scream all night but if you scream all night and then every time you scream, you get picked up and you go, oh, yeah, no, pretty op baby. Apparently, it's not great. It, well, it doesn't work either. Because what happens is you get yeah. more of the same behavior. I agree. Because you're rewarding that behavior. I agree. So I go. You I go, could just leave them in I your go. bed and you could you could avoid all of it. So it's not even about, it, it isn't just about the bed thing. It's about like moving them to their own room and getting them I know. on their own I deal. get the argument. So, so, but here's the thing is I would say, I go, okay, buddy. Hey. You know, it's two in the morning. Hey, it's bedtime. It's bedtime. And I pick him up. I put yeah. him. I lay him down. You I go, do what most bedtime. people do. I go back. He does it again. I go, hey, bedtime. Put him down again. Second time. Sleep, sleep right through the night. So think about this. He's actually, I think we're actually doing a favor physiologically and physically, right? Because now he now gets to sleep. sleep for eight hours rather than crying all night. Would he not sleep in your bed for eight hours? He, no, he actually started even then because he, he was obviously started off in the bed. He would start crying 
all the, the time. Like, yeah, once he's in there, then he's just constantly like, it was, it's literally like, and, it's death by a thousand cuts. It's too many, it's too much intervention. The kid doesn't need any more stimulus. It's like the dogs again. It's like, it needs to just lay down and go to sleep. And if you can get eight to 10, 12 hours of sleep, they become healthy, you happy sound like kids. me. It needs to just lay down. And it's enough, as you would say. It's enough. I get it. I it's get enough. it. I get it. Can you admit you were wrong? No. <laughs> no. I am. I am a. We are Native Americans. Me and my wife. And that kid is going to breastfeed way too long. And that kid is going to sleep in our bed way too long. And that kid is going to not have any trauma. I know I'm using that very loosely for yeah. so long and feel. There is a time and a place to abuse? say this is unacceptable for a child. You just try to not let them. Yeah, I'm very force free in this way. You're absolutely right. We are not going to let them rehearse this wrong behavior. We are just going to simply comfort them for so long and make them feel so safe. And listen, I'm not perfect at this. That, that, because there's going to be a time in that child's life where I'm going to say, I am over this. But like, it's, it's just not early on, but I, I know what you're, so you're saying. saying it's age, like, let me teach you about age appropriateness, age quick. appropriateness. Exactly. Yeah. No, I agree. And the thing is the way that you treat a three-year-old, is not the same way you treat yeah. a one-year-old. And you know that you're going to, you're going to change your style. But the thing is, is that ultimately it's still methods and effect effectiveness should play. Now you shouldn't be hitting the kid. You shouldn't be doing anything else. But if I, flip this back a little bit to take it off the kids. So people don't think we're talking about something weird here, but like this, your initial dog thing we're talking about five minutes ago. Thank you for bringing road. Back, by the way. Yeah. You got dogs. It. It's going to go right back into some street fighting stuff. But if you were to think about bars, right? Cause this reminds me of the force free thing. So you're at a, you're at a bar, you're at a nightclub, right? And there's that drunk guy and he's acting like a fool and he's running around. He could be punching people. He could be, um, groping women he could be doing all kinds of stuff right and maybe he's just punching people and fighting well some guy who's like the jujitsu guy he sees what's going on as like unacceptable okay, this right. is unacceptable behavior i'm gonna stop behavior, it physically unacceptable behavior is unacceptable so he rolls up he just goes whoosh, rear naked choke right right on the guy and so what happens when he does that people scream happily no, they scream, well, probably a mixture of both, okay. depending on who it is. Because some people are, oh my God, right? Because they're freaked out that like there's an altercation that is happening, okay. right? All right. And so then the guy starts to choke him. And then everyone's like, let go, let go, let go. He's like, I've got it from here, lady. <laughs> like, just back up. And sometimes those people go to prison. They can go. But that's what's crazy. But yeah, no, and that is crazy. But so then basically, you know, very short period of time three plus seconds right he'll he's be out, out. yeah right. he'll go out like right. no blood uh, or oxygen whatever um goes out cold and then in like a nice jujitsu fashion lays him on the ground gently so he doesn't hurt his, yeah, his head it seems appropriate so but the thing is you're still going to have those cries from the crowd that are like this isn't okay but it's like they didn't like the violence and the stuff the guy was doing but then they also didn't like the other guy intervening okay right? they he, wanted it to just go away here's where it deviates okay nobody with that guy goes that poor guy had a rough childhood and you need to give he groped some people he was a foster kid and and he wasn't raised right and his parent his parents hit him and listen, he can grope you. You really don't let the groper out of the house. You got to keep the groper in the house. This and is the, the most messed up and podcast. The, and the, and the person at the house goes, but I got to take the groper out. Like he's got to, he's got to go to work and you go, no, 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 no. Just keep the groper in the house. So that's the difference. That's the dog thing. The dog argument is we just the, go back that and that forth. The dog had a rough life and the dog was abused. Which is probably and true. And the dog wasn't. It could be true. Some, it could be true. It often is true. It isn't always true. I had a dog today that is one of the gnarliest dogs ever. And it was because um, he was babied so hardcore, tried to attack me. And he. It, I won't get into it. Then, they, then it's management with the groper, right? Don't let the groper out of the house. You can keep the groper in the house, but we can't, we can't tell the, we can't choke the groper out. Right, we can't do things like that that are mean to him, because he had a half, half life, and you just need to leave him in the house. That's the argument, in a nutshell. Yeah, but but he's dangerous to society. 
Yeah, but he had a hard life and you just got to manage it. No, no. Well, why can't we use force against him? Because, because he's a little, he's kind of a little baby. Like yeah. his, you know, he, he doesn't know how to live in this world. Yeah, but that's dangerous. But just manage it. You've got to manage it. We can't do something mean to grow the, to, to the groper. I see where you're going here. Do you? Groping, feel about or search blindly or uncertainly with the hands. Feel or fondle someone for sexual pleasure. We're talking about number two, Bro, look especially at against their will. I know this. Don't go on Google and uh, type in groping. Well, it's not but, like there's nothing actually there, but it's yeah, like it looks kinda like kinda weird. weird. It's pretty spooky. But I think I think we keep saying the word groping, which conjures up a lot of other weird things. But the thing is, is that you're basically going back off the rails. I know bro. you're getting back to the kind of force free thing, right? Where you're like, well, they just got to stay in the well, house. That was my whole point. No, I know. But it's like, but you're playing, you play different sides, right? Me? Yeah. No, I, 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 I'm not serious about the groper staying in the house. It's no. impossible. No, I know. And so the thing is, is what, what, what? That's the argument. I just nailed it. Which Did is I what? not nail it? Well, yeah, to say that there's a there's a behavior that's affecting the world, doing bad things to people, but we can't do anything to the dog or the person that's doing bad things to people because uh, I mean, I, well, did I not mercy. nail it? I think the thing is, is it's a it's a personality thing. So there's people that have a they love dogs they, more than people, so that they, they they would say choke the grouper out. But, but you can't say, don't choke a dog out ever. Yeah, ever choke a dog. But like, you can't physically tell the dog, knock that off. Or to the groper, you can't say, you can't say, knock that off to them. But so, it's a person, so they don't care. So I think on the spectrums, of, there's all the spectrums for all kinds of dog stuff, right? So on one end of the spectrum, there's going to be justice. And then on the other end, there's going to be like mercy, right? And so each person, He's going to be have a bent, a bent or whatever, one way or the other. A bend? Bend, a bend. They're going to have a bend one way or the other. So some people are going to be maybe like, you know, when they say, when they see stuff, they, they chant for the person who's getting choked out, right? They're going to be like. Very be rarely. Like, but they're going to be, ha I mean, they're, Never. you've seen this, right? Because it's seen. people. No, but you've seen like a, a fight, bar fight or something. And some guys gets, finally gets his butt whipped and everyone's like, yay. Oh. Like. You know what I mean? Yeah. So like they are more bent toward bend, bent toward justice, bent toward justice. Then the other side would be those that are more bent toward mercy. So it would be like, even though the That's guy true. had it coming, once that guy gets a hold of him, now he's the victim and they're like, don't touch him. Let him go. Let him go. And so That's all true. they want is more mercy. Uh, and it could shift. Yeah. And I think we're all like that, right? Right. Yeah, like yeah, you yeah. all want, um, you all want justice, justice. and mercy both sound good. Yeah, they're they're good. I and like them both. Like justice, I think too is like when you think about criminality, you think of like, yeah, we want justice. But then sometimes you hear yeah. the sad story, like you yeah, were yeah. saying, where somebody did have a hard life, and then they're going to be put yeah. to death. And you go, yeah. you know, yeah. maybe a little mercy wouldn't hurt yeah, too yeah, much. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right. So like, yeah, yeah, we're human. We're going to have these different. Yeah. Um, uh, my goal though is to have. But dogs are little babies. Dogs are poor little babies, and that's that's one of the differences. They're my baby. I wear my my dog in a little yeah. baby carrier. Yeah. And and they're different than people. They're softer than people. They're um they're, my they're, only they're more valuable than people. They're your friend and all of my them are friend. sweet little things. So people tend to, and this is one thing I know, is there's a group of people that that if they that they they value the dogs more. So the the person dog analogy is right, but there is a people, there are people who who have it here, and so anything anything bad done to the dogs. And I didn't mean to cut you off, but like, yeah, but I think we can all agree that, or not, we can't all agree, but let's just say that as P as you get, there's a precipice, right? And that is where is a pretty big word as, as you go, there's a cliff, right? And as you get toward this end of the cliff, the yeah. cliff, the, the Drops going off. off the cliff is the euthanasia. So any dog on a long enough time horizon, if it goes too far with biting kids, adults, other dogs, so forth, it creeps up to the precipice of, of euthanasia. Now, the closer you get to that precipice, the, in my opinion, the more, um, different tactics. I can't look at this, yeah, yeah, yeah. this video or this uh, thing anymore. Okay. Um, it gets closer and closer to the precipice. The more, 
uh, intervention needs to be done. And also the more you're, if, if you're running out, like, so say somebody, they always go like, Oh, I didn't really like you. And then I started watching your stuff. But like, once they are in that position themselves, because I think a lot of people, they read what like, or they, they hear about, they're very, um, judgmental against the people. Until they have a dog. Like I train. Yeah. And yes. they go, what happened? Like I raised this dog. Like I raised all my other dogs. Why right. is this one? Oh, I have a good comment about this. Go ahead. It's but like, finish your thought. It's about the genetic lottery or basically there were, people yeah. were saying the problem is they, they, uh, adopt animals from shelters and they said, I've adopted a bunch of them. And it's like a genetic lottery of what you're going to get. And he's like, I've went to breeders and the dog is like totally balanced and normal. So it's like, as you go into the shelters, yeah. we're not saying don't get shelter dogs. You should get shelter dogs maybe, and then learn how to deal with them. But the issue becomes, it is sometimes you don't know what that backstory is. Yeah. We talked part. about that. I think last podcast. Yeah, I think we did. It was Two a long podcast. Time ago. I don't mean to catch up, no, no. but like, um, yeah. And you're told to go to, um, you to go to to go to shelters, and you're told to cut their testicles off, which could do bad things to a dog. Like you're told a lot of bad stuff, and then you're and then you're supposed to only train with with fourth free methods to fix your dog. Like they just told you really bad information, and now they're like, "But you can't do that." Like people are in between a rock and a hard place for sure. Yeah, and it's that. Time and there's a lot of bad balanced trainers out there. Yeah, I know. Listen, I am anti e-collar on a high level with train turning it way up with trainers who don't know what they're doing is is a serious problem in society serious dogs are being killed due to this i i can explain why we don't have the time i'll, I'll go quick just so if someone sees this real quick the visceral or the pavlovian reaction Dogs don't know how to interpret a shot call, an e-collar. They don't when it's turned up. It, it's it's like nothing in nature except a lightning bolt. So they look at a dog and they go, I don't really like that dog. Then they feel this thing. They then associate that with the dog and they become unpredictable. It becomes more intense. And that's when dogs snap. Mm -hmm. And it's a problem. Yeah. And they don't know why they're feeling that intensity. They think it's the dog, right? If they... They, I don't know if they think it's the dog because it's far away. It's just, it's Pavlovian. It's a, yeah. it's a pairing of things, right? A person grabbing a dog and saying, sit down and you can't attack that dog. Their mother dog did that to yeah. them. They, their, their brain can interpret this sort of authority figure saying, knock it off. A lightning bolt is the only thing which their brain is not set up for. They don't yeah. get it. Is it just punishment? at a moment when they're doing bad thing to your point, right? You're all operant with your, with the kids. It's very operant. It's very punish the behavior that you don't want them to do. The problem is the brain can't interpret that kind of punishment like we think it would, because there's nothing in nature that, that, um, um, can mirror it. So their brain isn't set up to understand this very strange, very specific electrical current that flows between two things. And and you and you don't need it. Right? You haven't needed it. I don't need it because I developed my own method and I very early on saw the problems with it. And I got a lot of the e-collar people are almost as bad as the force free people. But there are some that are probably pretty educated on it. And There's good ones. Robert Cabral, Garrett Upstate Canine. Wing, right? like, he knows what he's there's doing, right? Good, yes. But those, by the way, those folks, those folks, see, this is why I can have no, we can have no nice things. That's why we can have no friends. Because yeah. we make them all mad. Yeah. So though those people, in my opinion, okay, they need to speak out against the bad e-collar trainers that are out there. They, they get mad at me. Those guys don't get mad at me, right? I, I know those guys a little bit. They yeah, but don't. You, don't, you don't speak out against dog daddy. <laughs> Does he use e collars? No, no, but just like the good ones I mean, versus the bad ones. That idea like, oh, well, the listen, listen, here, here's the dog daddy deal. If you guys want to know, there's a reason I don't do what dog daddy does. If I thought dog daddy's methods were the greatest methods in the world, I would do those methods. I know what he's doing. It's not magic. I get it. I have done I, I have gone down that road. I 
there's a reason I don't do what he does. It ain't, it's not that hard. Do you want to talk about this or, or should we talk about this later? I don't know. It's the end of the podcast, dude. Like this is serious. This is stuff that could be talked about early and be its own podcast and be its own video. Yeah. Let's move. Yeah, I know what he, I know what he's I know. doing. And I know what he's doing. But too, here's but I the don't thing. I also hate bullies. Yeah. So why do I defend dog daddy? Because no one will. Yeah. Yeah. Right in the, right in the I, heat of the drama. We're like, bro, you want to come on the podcast? Defend yourself. Right. What do you, what do you mean? That's what happened. He was in the middle of this. Oh yeah. Drama. Did we say defend yourself? I didn't talk to him. Before. No. Oh, okay. But I mean, Hey, it's like, yeah, I bet you if you were to go through a similar thing in your darkest hour, no one would be like, Hey, Joel. Exactly. We had dog day on the podcast because I mean, I mean, I shouldn't say nobody would defend him. That's not true. There's people out there, but he's getting it so hard that like, yeah, it becomes uncool to support him in any way. Right. And it's like, Oh, well, you know, he is a little bit, you know, so they start to try to jump on. So even people on his own side, per se or jumping into it being like well yeah i mean he is a little extreme because they're afraid of what everyone else will say about him yeah or the guns them. will be trained on them yeah and that's you know and that's their um let me lighten this can i lighten this up for you a little bit this podcast is out of control out of, it's enough <laughs> no okay i can't even say this person's name hi guys i remember use saying they must be from new jersey uh <laughs> use made the ad skippable thanks for oh. this not immediately noticeable but after a few podcasts i notice it's just it's much less frustrating to be able to skip every single ad can thanks. we stop making the ad skippable please do you want to make we're making no money <laughs> i know it's true so what's it called when you <laughs> if you're if your kid is crying and you're oh. like gonna let him cry what is that is that positive reinforcement or negative reinforcement uh, I, I don't know if it's operant. It's, um, it, it, there's a lack of intervention. So, so operant conditioning, the definition is behavior based on consequences. Okay. So if you let a kid cry, then, then, then there is no reinforcement given, then extinction will kick in. If the behavior itself is not reinforcing. Now you could argue is crying, is crying reinforcing? Well, probably not, except the intervention then reinforces the crying. I, I don't know yeah. if it is anything. There's nothing, there's no intervention. If you let them cry, there's no it's intervention. Not a, it's not training. There's no consequences, good or bad. Don't it's, think of a consequence as bad. Anything. Yeah. So, so it's, it's nothing. A, yeah, it's nothing. It's like training. They go, you're like, hey, well, it's we're doing, they call it sleep training, right? Yeah. So they have this all this sleep training stuff. I'm like, sleep training, just like let the kid go to sleep. But what I'm all I'm saying is from personal anecdotal experience yeah, is that which is when you leave. When you just give them 15 minutes, it depends on the age, of course. You give them a little bit of time, Why they are we just back fall to this? asleep. <laughs> You're like, no, because I didn't know what it what type of training it was called. It's 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 it's, it's called not. sleep training. Yeah, but there's no like when you don't intervene, there's no training. I'm sure there it's not operant. Yeah, it's it's, it's something else. It's what my dad did. <laughs> yeah, it's go to bed. No, that no, I like this conversation because I I believe in the way we have parented and I, uh, yours my, a little more than mine or what yeah that's why i do my way not your way yeah but i get wanting to go go to bed like oh i get it very much and our first two kids we were different they didn't stay in our bed that long so you're not consistent there's other factors to getting your kid out of your bed your poor two do older you know children. these other factors that i'm speaking your two poor older children they got like the tough joel and then like the last one's like well he's our baby it was kind of the middle one they got that and but he's he's the one that's like you could say he's the best of them all <laughs> i wouldn't say that but did you hear what in you a way said to your oldest <laughs> and uh, the youngest julius says this podcast is really good 100 uh deal that was in reference to the last one yeah uh, this one says, Tracy says, I absolutely love your podcast. Keep being you and just real and your love of your kids and the importance of parenting is awesome and shines through in everything you do. Uh, she also says, how about giant schnauzer for breed of the week? But, um, I've trained quite a few. 
maybe maybe if you're lucky do some research one tried to bite me like eight months ago i made a video of it i like yelled at the owner remember um, that one i was like lady people are like why are you you're so mean Gi that was a giant schnauzer someone gave you some props on um that you're recognizing the serious of the whole drama with that dog daddy yeah i saw and that you took the heat out of it i thought that was cool um this also this person who's getting like three in a row comments but they had i think they just did them in a row and they were good comments uh this is from i think our first or second podcast half half in wolf world and half in our world is an amazing way of describing the species overlap remember when you talked yeah. about that um can you explain i just what came up with that randomly during the podcast and we i was like that's it at the beginning didn't we i don't know yeah that dogs are they're they're in both worlds like like the the wild is is there's no there's no euthanasia like there's no jail like you can go kill whatever you want mm -hmm. and like it's it's what you got to do and then you come into our world and it's like yeah you can't kill whatever you want dog but the dog's kind of like kind of a wild like i attack things when they try to take my food and i attack um um competitors sexual mates and then people are like let's go to the dog park and then it's like the dog park is very unnatural place yeah well this person also says force free does not exist in the wolf world and that's where our dogs come from. So scientifically, it can work for the humanized part of the dog's life. Thumbs up. Hey, because we only have a few minutes left, can we play that voicemail? And that be the last thing? Let me do a couple more comments. Okay. Okay. I get paid by the hour, guys, so I have to yeah, you get lengthen these. paid a ton. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Just, yeah. We got read. Uh, freaking love you guys. Keep doing what you're doing. Cancel culture be damned. Thank you. Dog Daddy was a great podcast. Uh, yes, this was the best podcast you guys have done. They're referring to the one after the Dog Daddy podcast. I was 16, which I thought it was good. Joel has rarely, if ever, been better on one of these. There was some deep stuff discussed, plenty of laughs. And then the last one I'll read is, um, I don't think Beckman should be getting caught with the whole Dog Daddy, uh, Dog, Dog Daddy Methods drama. I genuinely believe this is the only channel that offers the best explanation on managing any difficulties with a dog. I've seen so many, but this is the only channel that offers realistic scenarios and long-term solutions and not TikTok clickbait content. There's no aggression in these methods, so haters need to relax and watch more than one video to understand that there's genuine care for dog the dogs that you train. Cheers and thank you. What do you think? Yeah. So we have a phone number. I was half tuned out because instead of gropers you brought up grouper the fish and i was like why is there a grouper on here i talked typed in groper right there and it still brings up grouper that's why i had to type i'm like in why is there a fish on there um okay this is gonna take us a few minutes but here let's hear this one okay guys this is a voicemail so if you guys just play the animal one okay but i, I know but i'm gonna we'll give make sure to give them the number after this is over yeah so yeah, yeah. Call. so here it is there's gonna be a whole group of people this that don't is, even know that we have this yeah we yeah we have a voicemail that we set up for you guys to call we got some calls we picked this one from this guy ready okay here here he's gonna play it where we you can call me and eric yeah, and leave a voicemail personal phone numbers yeah they're not our personal phone numbers here we go hey joe beckman i have another one for you this is more of a fun one so your options are 50 hawks 10 crocodiles three bears 15 wolves one hunter with a rifle Seven buffalo, ten thousand rats, five gorillas, or four lions. You must pick two of these to defend you, while the rest are coming to kill you. Which do you pick, and why? All right. Thank you. I'm ready. I know. Wow, that was I a know. hell of a question, bro. Well, there's a lot in there, but I just got I can't like take a zillion and write it down. I should have wrote it down before I did. Okay, I'll help you. You go ready? Ahead. Go ahead. Okay, we're gonna go with fifteen wolves and um, fifty hawks as my defense. Bro, 15 wolves? I'll smoke you, dude. 15 wolves? I saw a video the other day of four wolves chasing a grizzly bear, and the grizzly bear was like, I am not, I'm not doing this. Four wolves. I saw one that had like five wolves, maybe recently. Oh, we and have they were 15 wolves. They wear them out, don't they? They they bite so hard. And the dogs but and can... wild dogs, painted dogs, African dogs. I can't stand them. They are bullies of the wild animal world. I don't say that lightly. They they bully everybody and they go around the back and they bite their leg. And these hyenas are like 
they're like, these hyenas are just like, oh my God. And they're just getting destroyed by these. So wolves, they're just going around the back of the bear and biting him so hard in the butt. And the bear, you know what I'm saying? Dude, the Beckman. 15 wolves. So you know Beckman Unleashed. 15 wolves can do. If you think about this idea of the beginning of Beckman Unleashed is about like, kind of like sharing and showing the, the, not just the dog world, but just like the wild animal world with the, with everyone and like yeah. the, what is it, like the darkness and the harsh reality of, so a lot of these things have been coming up on my feed, like just uh, different stuff. So I saw this oh one with, God, a, uh, with a, it was either grizzly or some type of bear. I, I, think the, it was a I saw the worst one last week I've ever seen. I saw one recently and, and there was maybe five or six wolves, but I was like watching it and the, when the bear would get a hold of one of the wolves, it was gnarly. Like, did he you, kill it? No, but no, like, no. because they're back at him and I they're know. biting him. So I then know. he lets go and then he starts to run. But then I'm like, oh, this guy's going to get worn out because he keeps running and they keep chasing him. Bears can run far. Yeah, though. but dude, they can't. Like, Not as but, far as wolves. But imagine how much easier is it to fight if you have five of your friends oh, yeah. and they're just jumping in periodically. I know. He has to turn around a hundred times to I fight know. these guys that's off. The, that's the whole um, wild African wild dog, too. That's canines. Yeah, they're Canines badass. are very good about at it. And I have 15 it's of them. It's pack hunting. But you know why you're still going to lose to me? Hold on. I have 50 hawks. I Bro, crush you. They're from. they're coming from a whole different angle. Don't care. You... Are not you will not beat my deal. Go ahead. Easy peasy. So I haven't even thought about it much, but my first thought was I have one hunter with a gun. Of course you do. Of course I took that one. The second one had <laughs> 10,000 rats, dude. <laughs> bro, 10,000 rats is a problem. That is a bro. lot of rats. That's a lot of rats. Okay. What do you think the bro you your hunter the doesn't would have, think about that? You know he doesn't have an Uzi. You know that, right? He could. No, Uzis are illegal. He didn't say what type of rifle. Yeah, okay, a rifle. Yeah, I agree. It could, it could be a, if he if it was a bolt action rifle, then I'll switch it to something else. But if it's a traditional semi automatic like, semi automatic like a mini fourteen ranch rifle, take that all day. Okay, those wolves are going to have trouble. Now the fifty Bro, hawks are a problem. They're a problem. Maybe fifty hawks in ten thousand rats. Yeah, ten thousand rats, is a dude. Lot then you're getting them from all different angles. Yeah, I still think I, I probably win. I think your hunter's done. Like. He's going to take out a few and then he's done. He's careful. Toast. Careful, buddy. And then the rats are a problem. That's just a lot of rats. Where on earth? And do you, did you catch the other things he said? Bite hard. Uh, bu buffalo. Four lions. Is it male lions or is it female lions? That's a big difference. If it's female lions, they're getting smoked. If it's four male lions, that's a different story. Oh, here, here's the transcript here. I could um, do this all day. So, okay. 50 hawks, 10 croc. Crocodiles, I mean, if they're, we're in water, yeah, yeah, yeah they're easy, but not. I mean, three bears, three bears against fifteen wolves. That's about that's about where they are, huh? Eh, that's a pretty balanced close. equation, huh? Close. Because if you had three bears and six, it would be wolves, one, one. They would crush them. They would crush the wolves. Yeah, two on I, one. I agree. Three on one, maybe they crush them too, but four on one, I think the wolves have a good shot for sure. Um, a hunter with a right. Seven buffalo, dude. Your buffalo are so dumb. Are you talking about Cape buffalo? Oh, uh, seven Cape buffaloes. I'm thinking, but buffalo too are super tough. They're just dumb animals. But dude, Cape buffalo, American and buffalo, and American just buffalo. Like, yeah, the bison, they're as they call them. They like, like their buddy will just get shot, and they just like stand there. Dude, are like, we not going to talk they're... about five gorillas for a minute? No, oh, I'm not. I'm not on the gorilla train like you are. Go ahead. Okay, more. Is that it? Rip your arm off, like Rogan says. Um, four lions. Oh yeah, male lions or female? Wait, four lions. Four male I'll lions. take four lions over fifteen wolves. Four male lions? or female? I give. I take male. Four males. I would too. Yeah, but if it's female, which is what I thought of originally, uh, fifteen wolves is smoking through three female lions. You think? Yeah, female lions and male lions are a whole different animal. Male They're lions want to kill everything horrifically, and they enjoy it. And they will take the punishment. Females are like, yeah, I'll kill you, but like, I got Don't kids. I got yeah. kids to feed. Like, what was the, um, what was it? Um, I was watching. Oh, it was more of the hyenas going at, um, you know, I root again. I, I feel bad that I root against these hyenas the way I do, but this, this yeah. male lion is getting, um, yeah. harassed by the hyenas. hyenas. It gets the hold of this hyena and it is putting some work in on this hyena and this he hyena runs is away hurting. no 
No, and then, but so then they start biting him the same way the I know, wolves do. I've seen that one. Yeah, and he starts doing it. I know exactly. But then what eventually he won't let go, and eventually they start biting him. Yeah, and the thing runs off. Like I know a hyenas are so tough, dude. We should their make, skin. I, next time, can you imagine a male lion on you for like fifteen seconds, and then you're just okay? Like yeah, that's a hyena. Possible. Yeah. Like. <laughs> Yeah, they're so dude. They're what's up with their neck? You'd necks? be dead in two seconds. Didn't you say they were part of like the weasel family or something? Yeah, they're closest related to weasels. They're their own thing, hyenas. Do you think that Lion King did a great job of like? They kind of did a good job. Like hyenas are like sketchy. Yeah, like they like kill their brother. Do they? Yeah, they'll like. Well, well didn't Scar do that? Well, that was a lion. Yeah, but I mean, it still well, killed his brother, didn't it? Yeah, they like they like killed Mufasa. They're very into killing other. No, I know, but like they they got the hyena thing. Like they made him too. Like hyenas are like super like weaselly. Hey, but um, true. But they are a bit weird hyenas. They they have they have very strange um genitalia. Really? Yeah, yeah. The males are. They have the females have a like a pseudo penis. Like they and have like we a, can no longer monetize <laughs> this video. They I hey, this is this is nature, man. They have a they have very unique uh uh sex organs. Mm -hmm. Do you think that um you never know the way this thing's gonna go when you start asking me about animals? Since we're not gonna since we're not gonna monetize our next video. I'm an animal genius. Do you think no, every now and then I'll listen to what you say and I'm like, wow, this guy actually knows like all about animals, but I know you you like it's arguably know more about animals than you know about dogs. I he I do. Well, arguably, yeah. I hear like there's a guy in Rogan and I'm like, that guy knows more than me about animals. Like yeah. an animal guy who like lives in the Amazon and travels on. I'm like, that guy knows more than me. But it's it's rare, man. Yeah. Um, should we do a whole video where we don't monetize it? We just play the Lion King and we just walk through and like cover all the different animals. Like, what's that one? It's a warthog, right? Yeah. And then the, what's the other one that's with him? Yeah, it's a it's a um, uh, a meerkat. It's a meerkat. I never I knew so. what that one was. Yeah, uh, yeah. They those are what? No, Pumba or something like that. Oh yeah, Pumba is the meerkat, maybe. No, I think he's the other one. The warthog. Warthog. Yeah, bro. I saw this when video I of a warthog, a warthog, and he's like, this warthog's like standing there by a watering hole, and there's a leopard. It, it, it was hard to remember if it was a cheetah or a leopard. If it was a leopard, I'm surprised. If it's a cheetah, warthogs are like, I'm gonna kill you, cheetah. Cheetahs are weak. And he's just standing there looking at the leopard. And then he just goes like runs at the leopard and the leopard like jumps in the air. But this warthog was just like, I'm going to. They're so tough. They're so fast and tough. They're, well, they're all, pretty that's awesome. All pigs are really like pigs and hogs. And, and stuff. then imagine like a warthog being like the upper end of any pig. But like what you find is a lot of times like these, the, the pigs and the hogs and all that, they just, you know, they just charge yes. and they're fearless. Yes. Like a lot of other animals That's right. don't charge. They'll just run away. Yeah. Whereas like they run toward the danger. Yes. And it's like, um, pretty, it's pretty intense. And then I, yeah. I saw, they're like battering rams. Oh, they're dude. made to just kind of go forward and then, plus and then the, to do this. Plus they got the tusk, right? They yeah. Pick them up. Their whole thing is like, is like get to it. And then freaking hit it as hard as I humanly Throw possibly back, can. Right? Yeah. Well, the thing that the thing I saw, and we could probably end on this, but the thing I saw, which was uh, uh, like a reel or whatever, and it was um, this cheetah that was sitting on the edge of the bank, getting um, uh, getting uh, water, or whatever, from a watering that, hole. That alligator gets him. Dude, it's, he grabbed I him by it. the face. He dude. just grabs him, and that cheetah's like, wah, and he just brings him in. Dude, he gets a, he I gets hate a that piece video. of him, though. I hate it. And it's like, there's nothing he can do. Do you hate it? Well, I, I love cats. So any type of cat I'm saying. getting hurt bothers me. Um, so yeah, in the in the hierarchy, I like, always... I, I like a cats. gazelle. I'm like, okay. And then you see a cheetah, and you're just like, oh. Dude, but he grabbed... But the thing I is, know, you realize, like, clunk. there's nothing for you. Like... There is in then that's that's Africa. Even um leopards you can't drink water without leopards and dying. panthers. Like you see like these type of animals, and then you'll see like some type of either caiman or something. And it's like everyone's like the cats are the best of the best. And then they get grabbed by one of those things, and you're like, okay, well, they're not like there's something way bigger yeah. and better. And yeah. the thing is, too, I saw another one which was a gazelle or some type of um, you know, antelope essentially, and it was doing the same thing, and it was like it barely got it. But it didn't matter. It was like it barely yeah. got. It'll get like part of your arm. Yeah, it's like yeah, you're yeah. done. Yeah, yeah. It's like they're, you're going down. Yeah, so down. do you think I was going to ask you about this? Uh, 
because it was you know, we got to be done yeah i know so last thing here um i told you i get paid by the hour so uh does do you think that the alligator always knows that the prey that it's attacking can't breathe underwater yes but there's some things that can breathe underwater like not can a hippo the, breathe the, underwater no but they, it wouldn't bring try to bring a hippo down anyways right i don't think you're bringing underwater a fish or a shark yeah. So, but do you think it would try to bring down a fish or a shark and be like, oh, like, and it's not working and it's wondering what's happening? Oh, I don't know. Like, don't you think in that, because they're not very smart, right? They have like a real small yeah. brain. Yeah. Like, don't you think anything it brings down, even if it was a fish or a dolphin, it would think in its head, although dolphins actually breathe. Do you know what I'm saying? No, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. But anything that actually can breathe underwater, like a fish, in the or alligator's it. mind, it probably thinks that it could bring it down and suffocate it. Probably. It's not that smart, but right? It's just not big fish that you would just swallow the fish. Is this the weirdest? Does this go weirdest podcast? I don't know, man. I think so. So, all right. Well, we got I've, some heavy I've stuff. Definitely got my um, my bonus for today. So that's good. Get my second hour on the clock. Uh, yeah. Two hours. All right, let's be done. Okay. All right, guys. We'll see you next week. That's it. See you guys.